interview and job search strategies that work. Recently, the came to my realization that, uh, you know, change, right? Change in leadership, change in management, change in the whole dynamic of the, of the company, basically. So what am I talking about and how does it pertain to jobs and all that? Well, I'll tell you. Um, you're working in a place and you've been there how long, right? A year, two years, three years, four years, whatever. And everything's going great, right? And, you, you know, you've had to adapt a couple of times to the company, right, basically. And, you know, it's just human nature, right? Like, I'm good. I don't want to apply anywhere else. I'm content here. I'm fine. It happens. That's just normal, right? And then and then one day, you know, the company just does something so dramatic, basically, like, no, we want you to work more. Uh, we were going to, you know, you were working remote, but we're not going to do that anymore. We want you to work here. We want you to be butt in seat now, now, right? And and so can you can imagine, you know, your whole uh, your setup of your your lifestyle has changed because here you were working from home completely, and now they're like, oh no, we want to change it up and and we want you to work in the office like um, without any, without any explanation. So you just you're just to assume that that's the best thing. Okay, they made a good decision, and for whatever reason, who knows. It's most likely probably somebody who's taking advantage of the work from home schedule. That's probably what's going on. And, you know, probably somebody, you know, or, or some other team is jealous because people are, are, are working, you know, who are working from home and they feel, oh, I have to be in the office. And, but but that, guess what? They're a salesperson. They deal with the customer. The IT staff doesn't have to do that as much, really. And so, you know, that person has the ear of the, the CEO or the CTO, whoever it is, whoever makes the decision, they have the ear of that person. And, you know, oh, so, you know, suddenly that becomes an idea that this should be acted upon. Oh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. What happens is with that is it, a, it's a ripple effect. Because when you go from work from home to work in the office, here's what happened. Your motivation goes down, way, way down. Your your productivity goes way down. But here you were working from home, um, you know, very productive. You had your set schedule. You know, you woke up. Um, you know, you, you woke up. You logged in the computer, checked your email. Um, you know, ate breakfast, whatever. Uh, took the kids to school or whatever, whatever it is like that. And then you came back home and. You know, you continue with your meeting or you had a set schedule, right? And then all of a sudden it's just disrupted because of, of you know, presumably one person. You know, you don't know that, right? But that, that can be the case sometimes, you know, where um, whatever, for whatever reason, they don't explain to you why. Why is it that we're working more in the office? It doesn't make any sense, but there again, that's the company. That's how they do it. And, you know, unfortunately... Um, that that's just how it is, right? <laughs> when you need a job, you need money, you ha you do that, right? And and everybody has actually probably experienced that. Maybe not the work from home portion, uh, but just having to say, "Gosh, boy, I wish I would just, you know, I I just want to have enough money to where I I don't have to work anymore, right?" And of course, lottery is an is an option, right? But your chances of winning a lottery are are not very good basically, right? There's a lot of people, a lot of competition. I, I don't even know what the odds are, but it's, it's, it's not, you know, um, you know, if you're betting on winning lottery, it's not going to happen, right? So the other option is to, um, you know, just d deal with it, right? Deal with, deal with the changes that come about. And, you know, um, and sometimes what happens is there's a little, there's a, there's a, um, there, there's something in the brain that says, oh no, oh no, they've gone too far, you know, basically like, okay, that's the last straw. I've had it, you know, I've been over backwards for you guys, you know, and now you're doing this for me. I'm good. I'm good. You know? And so the thought is like, okay, let me find another J O B, um, or even better yet, maybe start a company, you know, maybe, 
you know, um, start a Udemy course, earn some extra income somehow, right? So you, so you're not having to work there anymore. So you're not having to, um, say, okay, I, I need, I need to work there, right. For a job. Um, because you just never know. You never know tomorrow they could say, we're good. Uh, we're going to lay you off or whatever. Right. Or they could make it so difficult to wear, um, you know, you have to be butt in seat all day, every day, all day, 12 hours a day. They could change your schedule. They could do whatever, right? Because of the company. And it, you know, again, it's based on the needs of the customer, right? So if you kind of, you know, unless you own your own company, unless you're financially independently wealthy, right? Uh, you have to deal with this type of stuff, right? And, and looking for a, a job, I think, is just uh, w- going from one, you know, one, you know, have to work for money to another have to work for money. And it's every time it's just a, a little increase of have to work for money, right? So I have to work for less. So basically what happens is um, I have to work for less money, meaning I don't have to, um, because I make more, therefore I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I have, uh, I have more money. And so I can, I have a little bit of a cushion, right? So, you know, I'll, I'll put up with whatever it is that the company wants me to put up with. You know, if it's, um, oh, I'm sorry, you have to work, but, but you don't understand. I have to take my kid to the, to the dentist. No, no, you have to work. Okay. Well, that's one example, right? Basically of like, oh, hmm. Yeah. I'm going to, okay. Do I need the job? I do. Hmm. My kid needs to go to the dentist, huh? Yeah, let me weigh that a little bit, right? And so you you have to shuffle your your schedule around. And the reason they wanted you to work be, because you you had to miss your kid going to the dentist was because there's some meeting or something, right? Somebody important's coming in to the office, and they want you there, right? For whatever reason, right? And that person doesn't even talk to you, right? So you're like, uh, hmm, and you know, and sometimes it happens where you're like, why was I even needed to be here? There's no reason. Well, we just, you know, we needed you here. Why? Well, because, you know, you know that comes down to probably leadership, really, or lack of leadership in, in my mind, really. When uh, a company doesn't understand its people, and I know in a couple other podcasts I talk about this, where when your company, the, the, manage, the managers, when you have a manager, meaning the manager... You work for the manager, right? But if a leader, leader works for you. That's how that works. And, um, you know, typically managers micromanage. Uh, they want to make sure they know everything going on. Um, and and when, you, when you talk to them and you, you kind of press them on certain issues, oh, no, no, uh, well, just talk to such and such or whatever, right? Kind of pass the puck, pass the puck a little bit. Instead of saying, you know, instead of explaining like, oh, that's why, huh? Okay, having a real conversation with somebody versus just giving a canned response, right? That's the difference between a leader and a manager. Uh, a leader is going to be like, "Hey, I understand," or "Here's here's why." Here's the because everybody in a job wants to know why. Why why am I doing this? Why is it relevant? Because, um, you know, people people when they work at a company. They do feel like they own own the uh, uh, they own the the task. You know they have ownership of it, right? And you know they just want to be they want to be uh, led into conversations. They want to know what's going on. Tell them what's going on. Why should it be such a big secret? You know, all of a sudden that it's like can't tell you. Only management can know. Like why? Just explain to your people what's going on. So yeah. Um, anyway, so. Um, that is, uh, the, I guess the moral story is, you know, um, have yourself set up, uh, for a job, you know, or always be interviewing and that way you don't have to worry about the situation. You know, you, you have a little bit of cushion, uh, don't get yourself in debt basically to where you're forced to have to, uh, work for somebody, um, that you don't want to. That's the key right there. Um, I don't know if you've listened to Dave Ramsey. He's a, a guy on um, on the podcast there, and he talks about um, 
you know, Financial Peace University or whatever, but he's got a lot of cool things he talks about. I myself don't listen to it that much anymore. Um, I like to listen to the podcasts that are like uh, enter- uh, entrepreneurial stuff uh, or um, um, networking uh, podcasts. I like to listen to those. Um, Packet Pushers is a pretty good podcast to listen to. Um, because, you know, I can't have a conversation with everybody, right? But what I can do uh, in other fields, basically, right? Or how things work, right? But what I can do is I can um, listen to their the podcast and kind of get an idea of what's going on. And then from that, I can say, okay, I can pull that information out of there. Like, for instance, uh, learning about Kubernetes, K- Kubernetes from packet pushers. That led me into something else about uh, networking, right? And then, of course, um, if you follow my blog, I'm trying to get my CCNA again, right? So, you know, um, it's, it's, you know, I don't know that I necessarily need it, but it's just something I want to do, right? So I gave myself 90 days. I'm probably like 10 days in, and I'm probably like 1% completed with it or whatever, but um, neither here nor there. But, um, you know, I think that's going to help me in, in, the ne- in the future with uh, a J-O-B or a skill that I need to have, basically. Um, and, yeah. So, um, yeah, appreciate everybody listening to this podcast, and have a great day.